Back in the day, this was one of the world's wealthiest gold rush towns. They came from every corner of the globe to find their fortune right here in central Victoria. Bendigo is two hours north of Melbourne. And because we like to discover things down under, we could not possibly go past their very own discovery centre. Welcome to another one of Tim's big, nah, interviews, actually. We're here at the Discovery Centre and this is Lisa. And I reckon if the weather's not good and you're at the caravan park and the kids are going stir crazy, Lise, bring them here. Definitely bring them here. Now, this is like more than just like a playroom. This is like a learning centre, isn't it? Yeah, but we don't like to say that too loud. It scares, no, no. scares the kids off. Small L learning. Yes, yeah, small L learning. <laughs> small Good on that. Like yeah, 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 small L learning. But everything's fun. Everything, everything is very cool. Yeah, and it's all about doing stuff. The Discovery Science and Technology Centre takes advanced ideas and explains them in a way even the simplest minds can understand. Brooke, you're growing very sleepy. You need to wash the rangy. You need to vacuum the interior. <laughs> you can drop by for a few hours or spend the whole day here. But before you leave, you must challenge yourself on the centre's number one attraction, the vertical slide. OK, slide and oughts. Up we go. This, you go first, Joe. Joanna, sorry. Jacob, you follow, and I'll come last. Have you ever been on it before? So, are you allowed to cry? Yeah, because you don't want to be shouting out we and actually do it. What's the matter, Tim? You look scared. No, I can't do it. I'm with Jacob. We can't do it. <laughs> the walk of shame. It's too high. Do it. Seriously, I got up there and it's just like, uh, uh, suddenly you're just holding on and, and it's just too high. The centre is open daily from 10am until 4pm for the brave hearts and the scaredy cats alike. What's that one, Joanna? Can I have a go? It's the drinking thing for you, silly boy. <laughs> you are? After a big day of running around, you'll be looking for a top tourist park where you can unhitch your van and put your feet up. Linda, Park Lang, it's absolutely beautiful. It is glorious. We love it here. People just like to chill out, relax and take in the atmosphere. It is lovely here. We're in a bush setting. It is peaceful. Once you wind down, you may never want to leave. And you don't have to. Linda and her team have got the bases covered. I have to say, this is the most gorgeous camp kitchen I have ever seen. It's got its own water feature. I know. <laughs> it's very relaxing. You sit over here of an evening and people just relax and have a glass of wine. Who can do star? You've got so much to offer for children with the play equipment, the jumping pillow, the swimming pool, volleyball court, there's hikes. <laughs> a little bit to keep everybody amused. And soon we'll even have an outdoor cinema. So. An outdoor cinema? Yeah, it's going to be great. No. I will never get our kids inside. <laughs> How many cabins do we have? We have got 29 cabins of various styles. And what about camping sites? Camping sites, there's about 30 powered sites and 10 unpowered. But Bendigo Park Lane's facilities have slipped the attention of Peter and Brenda because for the last 47 years, they've only had eyes for each other. Oh. I used to be a, a jockey and I, uh, I was going to the races and I had a car accident and uh, lost my leg. And I was engaged to Brenda at the time and uh, I said to Brenda, uh, to go and find someone else. And she said, now if I've got five minutes to live, I'll have someone come up and I'll marry her uh, in, in three minutes, so. Oh. And, and we've stayed, to, been together ever since. You lost your leg, you got married 47 years later. You are out there and you're seeing this beautiful country and. That's correct, yes. And living the dream. Is there anywhere you haven't been? Been to Hobart a long time ago, but 
uh, 47 years ago yes. and we'd like to go back down there again and so have a look at that again. So maybe you might go back there for a 50th wedding anniversary oh, or something. Oh, very yeah. good. If you're sitting at home watching Discover Down Under and you're thinking to yourself, I want to get into caravanning and camping, <laughs> maybe the Coromel F616 is the answer. The F is for fantastic. This is a 20-foot van with fold-up front bunks, shower, toilet and main queen bed. Inside, the Coromel features the latest in European styling and it's packed with Dometic products, including a 150-litre fridge and roof-mounted air conditioning. Check out the aerodynamic design on the front here. That really knocks back the drag. So if you're doing the lap, you're going to save yourself hundreds and hundreds of dollars. That's like a palmy a week for free. This truly is a lovely van inside and out. Tim's disappeared with the Range Rover. The last thing I heard him say was, dirt track. Range Rover Vogue, this is so fun to drive. We're running the 375 kilowatt diesel V8. It is a monster. Biggest motor that the Range Rover have ever put in their vehicle. It is a joy to drive. The dash changes light intensity when it darkens and brightens. It's amazing. But it's the little things that make this such a pleasure to drive. Check this out. <laughs> See ya! Whoa! From a top-class car to a top-class meal. That's right, viewers, it's Palmer time. Right, Brookie, this is the historic Shamrock Hotel in Bendigo. And if it's good enough for Dame Nellie Melba, <laughs> it's good enough for us. And good enough for a Palmer. Oh, she loves her Palmers. It's huge. That looks so delicious. It's huge. Wow. It's on chips. It's, it's on the chips. I don't know. They do over 200 of these a week. I oh, know. It looks brilliant. Let's go. There's ham. Yes. We've got a mixture of cheeses on top. Mm-hmm. We've really opened the batting hard. I think this is... Um, this is going to be difficult. This is our first Palmer for know. this new series. Yes. And Tim, I'm telling you, it is right up there with one of the best we've ever had. But really, because you always copy my scores, mm -hmm. I'm getting you to do your secret score on this Palmer oh. right now. I believe, and I'm so criminally hard on this Palmer, I'm giving it an 8.5. <laughs> And, I, and it is, I'm criminally hard. An 8.5 is an excellent mark. It, yes. If you're, if you're in Bendigo, you have to come and I'll try come, this I'll Palmer. To Today, I've given it a mm -hmm. 8.5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Gee Willikers, a total score of 17 to kick it off. Pubs of Australia, you are on notice. Just a few minutes to the west of the Shamrock, Avondale Caravan Park is one of three top tourist parks in the local area. Their powered sites are nice and shady and a generous size, but if size doesn't matter to you and you're travelling light, there's a good choice of cabins. And with the grocery store and post office close by, you can stock up on supplies and send a postcard to the loved ones back home. Now, this is probably a project that Majestic took on board because they've been building caravans for a long time and a lot of people really wanted something a bit more robust, something that they could sort of take off-road a bit more. The A-frame has been strengthened so it can take a bit of punishment. We've got twin gas bottles at the front, heaps of storage. Then, of course, you've got your fold-out barbie. Now, this is a great device on these because you're not setting a barbecue up. You're basically pulling up folding out the Dominic awning and then bang, pulling the barbie out, firing it up. 
black checker plate, brushed aluminium exterior, okay? High to the checker plate, so it's gonna protect it from stone chips. And this is hard as, so you're gonna be able to run a tree down the side and not rip a hole in it. She's very well put together. Sexy unit, very handy, and yes, you're gonna go off-road in this. Very handy. What do you reckon, Brooke? Tim, if you think outside sexy, wait till you come inside. It's beautiful in here. The ensuite is what blows me away. The huge double shower, enough for two people in there. Toilet, washing machine, sink, and the best thing of all, you can close it off from the rest of the van. It's got a Dometic fridge and freezer, split system air conditioning, double glazed windows, a queen size bed, microwave, entertainment system with indoor speakers. Cooktop is electric and gas. We've also got a grill, 30 storage compartments all up, as well as leather seats, and a really great van for couples. The Majestic Trailblazer, with its electric brakes and ball weight of 156 kilos, means it's gonna sit behind your vehicle without any worries whatsoever. And this is the way to do it too, driving around in Bendigo in a Range Rover. In style. And it is towing the Majestic. Like, the Majestic is not even there. Welcome back. This is Discover Down Under, and we are in Victoria's Gold Rush City, Bendigo. The trouble is, I think my co-host may have caught the fever. So, Prospector Dave, how many folks do you get through Bendigo Gold every year, do you reckon? Oh, we're getting uh, hundreds of people coming through that are uh, coming out just to experience the life of the old miners with some modern equipment. So you, you will basically fit them from the ground up, won't you? We do, yeah. What do we need to, to prospect? We'll give them some instruction on how to use the equipment. They'll be able to experience uh, the thrill of unearthing their own natural nugget. <laughs> how good would that be? Good? It would be excellent. And remember, Tim, you made me a promise. Easy on the pressure, Brookster. I need to concentrate. How many times have you done this, Dave? I have done this thousands and thousands of times uh, over the years. And in the last uh, three to four weeks, just in the areas where we are out here, there was someone who came through and uh, uh, got a signal with their metal detectors, mm -hmm. scraped away the surface, and thank you very much, it was seven ounces of gold. So... Oh, wow. Just over your $10,000 mark. Oh, wow. There's something definitely there. There's definitely. We're on a target here. OK, you can see how that's got much, much louder. Oh, you bet. Just grab a little pile and run it over the top of the coil. It sounds like it there. I can see it. It's right there. Let's have a look there. So this little piece of gold, you would give me... Uh, you would probably get somewhere around your 8 to $10. It's that easy. If you're going vanning or camping, really, you've got to have a metal detector. It's another activity that they can get out and do in most states of Australia, and uh, they've got the chance of getting a reward uh, for the time they spend out there. If you were lucky and find a couple of good nuggets, you would be able to set yourself up in a majestic caravan, just like the trailblazer we are towing this week. Hi, welcome to Tim's Big Things. This is Sun Long. He's an imperial dragon and he lives right here in Bendigo. Sat at the back, so so. No, we, she didn't. Yes. Really? Yes, when she visited Australia, this is a vehicle that they drove her around in. And it looks like we're coming up to coming up to the Gold Nugget Tourist Park. Colin and Linda own it, but I think the cats might really be in charge. And these cats are amazing. Oh, wow. These are our friends. This is the kitten. Right. This is Mr. Jelly Belly. The visitors would love these. Oh, wow. Well, they're the oh. greatest icebreaker. After driving for five hours, they're a bit grumpy, you know, not feeling 100%. They come in the office and the cats just break the ice. 
the <laughs> conversation starts, they pick them up and they give them a bit of a cuddle and, of course, the cats are spoiled. What are your favourite parts of the park at the moment? At the moment, a lot of the focus is around the pool. Yep. And the camp kitchen is in the middle of the park and the caravanners are all in a circle around it. Yep. So that everyone has, you know, easy access to the toilets and the laundry and such. Yep. What are your plans for the park? To continue to make it better. You might struggle seeing where it needs improving. It looks like a top-notch park as it stands. And choice, wow. There's standard, family, poolside executive or even penthouse. And that's just the cabins. Since last time we were here, it's just come up. You can really see your, your efforts are not wasted. I can hardly wait to see what you do with the pool and the camp area. Come back in 12 months. Oh, I really, and I will. Chris and Rod Bryant and their two boys stopped in for a few days at the Golden Nugget, en route from Cairns to Tassie. Yeah. What, what made you decide to go all the way south? Just the winter, basically. It was yeah. nice and, um, well, it's not as cold. Do you find that other, other car vanners and, and campers are coming sort of north and you're yes. sort of heading south? Yes. They, uh... We're going the opposite to everyone. But that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. What budget did you outline for yourselves? We tried $100 a day. OK. OK. And have you stuck to it? Oh, we're doing OK. I'd say, I think on average, about 120 a day. The Bryants are getting a helping hand by using a top tourist park membership. It gives them a discounted rate on their site. Well, I noticed you got the tinny. Have you? Have, how are we going on the fishing? Yeah, no, we're yeah, pretty good. well. Well, I did anyway. Yeah, he did. Okay. <laughs> the family let me down, but. <laughs> <laughs> Around these parts, the talking tram is key. But you know, there's another storytelling transportation combination by the name of Mr Goon. Well, I never thought I'd come to Bendigo and go on one of these. <laughs> yeah, oh, it was one of those things that um, I got it as a birthday present while I was over in Malaysia. And uh, when I came back, I thought, what am I going to do with the trishaw? So, yeah, here we are. Justin was dubbed Mr Goon by the locals when he was working in Asia, so they could remember his name. He does joy rides, he does ride and dine, and he does historical tours. And you know what? Roslyn Park is jam-packed full of history. In the old days of the old rush and so forth, it was um, the government camp. So you had all the, all the tents around, you had the gold commissioner, you had the, the police, the army barracks. On the right here is Bendigo Creek. Now, Benigo Creek was named after a shepherd that was on the Ravenswood Run towards the end of the 1800s. It's a relaxing and peaceful ride on the Trishaw, it's but it's not it. the quickest. However, being up front, you don't miss much. We're coming up to the fernery, and this fernery here is actually the oldest fernery that's in existence on public land in Victoria. You'll see at the front here, the gates, these are actually a tribute to all good mothers. <laughs> 